If you gave me a fish, I would be able to eat for a snack because I'm an American and I overeat every single day. But if you taught me how to fish, I'd probably just go to the store or get HelloFresh to deliver some fish to my door uh, so I can buy it instead of going to get it myself again. But that concept doesn't apply in builds for RPGs, for me anyways. I always like making my own builds rather than following any build guide online. So I thought there might be like-minded individuals that would care to do the same. And so I'm here to, uh, you know, I thought I'd give an example of how to make one in uh, Last Epoch. Now, the way you go about making a build is you find one thing that you absolutely love, you think is super cool, or you just want to see how far you can push it. And for me, Spellblade has always been one of my favorite archetypes, one of my favorite playstyles in all games ever. The hybrid caster fighter class, like the up close fighter. It's just it's just dope. But I've made a few before. And one thing I always wanted to try, and in this case what I think is super cool, is the fire aura mechanic. Now fire aura is a fire spell damage over time and it stacks on top of your character and goes out in an area around you. You can turn it into a lightning aura, you can turn it into a cold aura, but I just wanted to do fire aura because when I was looking through skill trees, I saw this combination of nodes in the surge skill tree. We have the storm battery, which gives you stacks when you attack with a melee skill while surge is on cooldown. And then we have consuming those stacks gives you ward. That's great, but they also give you a chance, a 100% chance per stack to give you a fire aura. Now what this does effectively is as soon as you unlock Surge, you're going to double the amount of fire auras that you have at any one time. So you're effectively doubling your DPS and the higher attack speed that you get while you're playing the game and just increasing your build in general and reducing the cooldown of Surge, it's gonna start tripling, quadrupling the amount of fire aura stacks that you have on your character. And then we can also turn Surge into a fire skill, and then we can also put Flame Reeve on arrival. Now, here's a demonstration of what that looks like. But what's interesting is while I was making this build, and this is often going to happen to you, you're not going to know exactly what's best until you test a ton of things out. For example, the best overall skill synergistically with that idea of Surge and fire aura is mana strike now it's only mana strike if you get the teleporting strikes node because the utility of being able to attack with a melee skill at range in order to stack up those stacks on surge in order to consume those stacks when you cast surge to get fire auras is incredible it's really useful and then also there's a lot of global spell damage per enemy hit and you can stack this up and like we covered before fire aura is a spell so this increases fire aura damage and it also increases the amount of fire auras we get and it also sustains all the mana we need when we get all the nodes down here in order to sustain surge which costs 25 mana that also casts flame reeve on surge arrival at 36 mana costing over 60 mana every three seconds takes a lot of resource regeneration. I didn't even know that Mana Strike was going to be what set the build off until I specced into it and played the build and had the thought, oh, I can't actively use Flame Reeve because I don't have enough mana for it. I'm using Mana Strike most of the time, and so let's make Mana Strike as useful as possible. And it turns out that is the best way to play this build. So again, I always wanted to make a Spell Blade with Fire Aura, and then I saw the combination of the Storm Battery node with the Fulmination node, combined with the Flaming Surge node and the Pyroclasm node. And then I tested it out and was like, I can't really be using Flame Reeve because Flame Reeve costs too much mana to sustain. And so I realized that Mana Strike is the only way to sustain that much mana while keeping up a high DPS. And then I was using just these nodes to gain as much mana as possible, but I realized I was full on mana. I didn't want to micromanage my mana as much as was being asked of me to do. So I kept Mana Strike as the main used, as the mainly used skill and made it buff up the damage as much as possible. And we put it on auto target so we never have to aim either. It plays like a gem. And then also you look in other trees to see if there are more synergies, like in the Flame Ward tree, for instance, we have Fire Aura on Flame Ward activation. It's only one stack, it's still good though, because we're scaling it up a ton. But here we have Fire Aura damage, 15% multiplicative. And you'll read there, this also affects Fire Aura from sources other than Flame Ward. Now that is the same Fire Aura, we can double check by holding Alt. So that gives all Fire Auras 15% multiplicative more damage. And because our build essentially scales off of attack speed and spell damage and all this, 
That makes the Burst of Fire node and the Flame Blast node in the Enchant Weapon skill tree do a lot of damage. You'll see there. This activates quite often. It barely costs anything. And because we're sustaining mana, it's just another synergistic portion of the build. So the way that you make builds is you find something that looks super cool. You look for all of its synergies because there are a ton of synergies in the game and ones that you wouldn't even expect, like Mana Strike in this case. And then you just go for it, baby. You just make everything based around that one thing and make it as convenient to use as possible. You make it as strong as possible, have as high as an uptime as possible. If it's stackable, think of a way to sustain as many stacks as possible. If it's a combo-like skill, on my marksman for instance, does essentially no damage until I get three shadows and consume those shadows with a dark arrow on a hail of arrows and then it does around 10,000% more damage. And then you just make sure it's tanky enough and you have enough sustain. And then you make up for all the weaknesses of the build or the base class with your blessings. And for example, the build that I'm playing right now is level 58. This has looked the same ever since I unlocked Surge at around level 50. And I've been fighting enemies over 10 levels above me the entire time while being tanky and sustaining somehow. And I had no idea that it was going to be this good. But once you first get started making your own builds, they're probably going to suck. They're probably not going to be very good. You're probably going to be confused why it's not as good as what you see online. It takes a lot of trial and error, but it's worth it to go through that trial and error process, in my opinion. A lot of builds that I've made have sucked. Only recently have I been able to make builds that can rival top end builds. So go fail and fail and fail some more, and then go succeed once, and then you'll be addicted to it. Good luck out there.